Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta, Swaminiti Namine. Namaste Sarasati Devi Ghoravani Precharine, Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine. Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha, Patita Nam Pavane Bio, Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasa de Gaur Bhakta Krishna 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our Nectar of Devotion study at the level of Bhakti Shastri. Right? This is lesson number five. Can you share this screen with me, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Am I shared? Yeah? Just a second. Yeah, you can share now. Okay. Okay, everyone can see the PowerPoint? Yes. 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 Oh, good. Let's see. All right, so we'll, let's see. Lesson four, revision. We examined the six characteristics of pure devotional service and at what stages they manifest. So, who knows, at what stage does Krishna Karshini. Krishna Karshini means the only means to attract Krishna. At what stage does that manifest? Prima Bhakti. Prima Bhakti, yes? Yes. And what about at what stage does uh, Sudurlabha manifest? Sudurlabha means rarely achieved. Bhakti. Yes. And at what stage does Klesh Agni manifest? Sadhana Bhakti. Okay. At what stage are you at? Sadhaka Mala. Really? Lila Avatar, Mataji, are you at Bhava Bhakti or Sadhana Bhakti? I, I, I didn't catch you. What is stage of uh, I asked you, what stage are you at in devotional service? What oh, is I'm, your... I'm in Sadhana Bhakti. Oh, Vaiti Bhakti. Oh, you're at Sadhana Bhakti. Vaiti Bhakti. Okay, good. All right. Recording in progress. And then we discussed about Krishna consciousness movement performs the highest welfare activity. Why? Why is Krishna consciousness the highest welfare activity? What's it doing for people? Relief from material anxiety, Maharaj. Relief from material anxiety. Okay. And beginning of beginning of all auspiciousness in their lives. All right. Yes, can change the life, right? Yes, Maharaj. Any anybody else about why Krishna consciousness is the highest welfare activity? Because it bestows the superior happiness and also, uh, yeah. It's to superior happiness. In what way is it superior to other happiness? Give the soul liberation. To, at the end of life, to give the soul liberation. Give the soul liberation. Happiness which is achieved by performing devotional service cannot be compared to any other happiness 
and uh, um, why not? Yeah, that is why it is ultimate blissful life. Incalculably condensed bliss, Sandra Nanda Vishesha. Well, incalculably condensed bliss, that is the very high level of devotion. You have to be really high, really advanced devotee to get that. You know, we, you're, we're only sadhanas, we're only doing sadhana. So we won't get that incalculable condensed yes, bliss. So it produces good qualities and uh, it, it bestows superior happiness. And uh, this happiness is greater than the happiness which, is, uh, which we get out of other material enjoyment because that is temporary. Yes. This is eternal. That's the point. That's what I was wanting to hear. Right. This is... The happiness of material sense gratification is very temporary and always becoming less. It gets less and less. We enjoy less and less. But material, that's material happiness, less and less happiness. But spiritual happiness, it increases more and more. We get more and more pleasure. We should be getting more and more pleasure from chanting Hare Krishna and worshipping Krishna doing service for Krishna. So the spiritual happiness is eternal, ever increasing, but material happiness is very temporary and reducing, miserable, not, not, very, not very good happiness, a very low level of happiness. He said there's happiness like the hog and dog, and there's the happiness of the devotees. It's on a different level. We don't get happiness like the hogs and the dogs. We don't want that happiness. We want the real happiness. We want the higher taste. Okay? Okay? So, Klish Agni. Material distress. Three causes. What are the causes of material distress? Who knows? Three causes of material distress. Lila Avatar, Madhaji. You don't know? Sitala, do you know? I ignorance. The ignorance is one, yes. Another one? No, no, those are not causes of distress. Material desire. Material desire, right. Ignorance, material desire, and one more. I'm asking Sitala. And uh, we want to enjoy. We had ignorance material desire and what follows from material desire uh, we, we want to enjoy so what do you do you do sinful activities right ah, so, so, so yes. sinful desire and leads to sinful activities right okay so yes. for, so here you see oh let's go back Material, sinful reactions, material desires, and ignorance, avidya. Avidya is the root. First is the avidya, and then comes the material desires, and then, this is not very well done. Who did this? Not very correct. It shouldn't be actually like, okay, three causes of suffering. Well, we had this, didn't we? What is this?
Oh, okay. We're reviewing, huh? This is revision. Avidya, ignorance, then material desires and sinful activities, sinful actions cause suffering. So three causes, the causes of suffering, ignorance, material desire and sinful activities cause suffering. And here's the stages, the stages of sin. In the beginning, it will be, we do papam, we do sinful activities, and then from sinful activities, you get the unmanifest reaction, the unmanifest reaction first. Aparabdha, is that, is that going to cause you suffering? If you have aparabdha? No. It's not manifest. Parabdha, manifest reaction. How do we know somebody's got some parabdha karma? How do you know? Well, uh, shash, shashikan. Shashikan, Prabhu. Shashi. Tell us. We will discuss that uh, he will be politist again, he will have, uh, uh, he will be not, not very educated. Not like very good, not very educated. And what else? And uh, cripple minded. Cripple minded. Uh, cripple means uh, mentally not very developed. Well, I Some don't. Physical diseases. Physical disease, right. He may have physical disease, yes. He may have poor education. What else? Poverty. Poverty. Huh? Poverty. Poverty. No money, right. Poor. And, and not, not maybe very ugly, not good looking. Yes, sir. So that's, karma, that's parabdha karma. So can parabdha karma be changed? Yes, Maharaj. How? Through the process of devotional service. By devotional service, right. Do you know the verse? Yeah, that come from Asmita Maharaj. Karmani Nirdoshi 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 Nirdoshi
So they can be changed easier. But Parabdha karma is more difficult. You have to do very serious devotional service to get free from Parabdha karma. You have to do the you have to chant very carefully and you have to do service with real devotion and then you can get free from the reaction. Okay? So that's uh, the relationship with the suffering. Okay, so three causes of material distress. And then Shubhada, Shubhada, all auspicious. And there are different kinds, different ways in which we can show the auspiciousness of devotional service. We show auspiciousness, we create auspiciousness by showing compassion for everyone. We care about everyone. We don't just only think, oh, that person's low class, oh no, he's no good. We really care about everyone and we try to help everyone. And we attract everyone. Krishna is all attractive. He attracts everyone. And then produces good qualities. One who is a devotee he should have all good qualities. He won't even kill the insects. We won't kill little insects. We'll be very careful. We think of the flowers as our sister. We think of the trees like our brother. And the fourth quality bestows superior happiness. So this is the, the four points about devotional service being auspicious. Then number three, moksha laguta krit, derives concept of liberation. So devotees are not eager for liberation because they're, they've got something more than liberation. They're already liberated. They don't worry about liberation. They don't want, they, they, they want devotional service. They don't just want liberation. Liberation, that's for the mayavadis. But devotees, the devotees, they want devotional service. Then number four, sudurlaba, rarely achieved. That it's not easy to get Krishna's mercy. It's not easy to become a pure devotee. Why is it not easy? Who can say? Shubha Mahi Mataji, Shubha Mahi Mataji, why is it? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Sadat Pranams. So Krishna actually uh, rarely agrees to give um, devotional service because by doing devotional service, the Lord himself becomes purchased by the devotee. Yes, right. What are the examples? Vibhu Chaitanya? Give some example, the Lord becomes purchased by the devotee. Um, him becoming the charioteer for Arjuna. Yes. Another and one. him delivering a message for Yudhisthir. Okay. Yes. Any others? Uh, uh, the gopis. Yeah. They purchase Krishna. Yeah, they control Krishna, right? Krishna's controlled by their pure love. Okay, very good. Okay. So cannot be achieved by our own efforts. We need Krishna's mercy to get it. We can't get it just by our own. But of course we have to try. To get Krishna's mercy, you have to attract Krishna's mercy. And Krishna's attracted when he sees that we really want it. And Krishna rarely awards it. Number number five, Sandrananda Visheshatma, incalculable condensed bliss. This is very advanced, that's Prima Bhakti. And then Sri Krishna Sri Krishna Karshini, 
only means to attract Krishna. So under the control of the internal potency of Krishna, what's the difference between the internal potency of Krishna and the external potency of Krishna? Anyone can say? Melin, Melin, do you know? Melin? What's, what's the difference between the internal potency and the external potency of Krishna? Uh, external quality is uh, to attract uh, the Krishna. It's uh, is means to get the happiness of. Sorry, I don't know. You don't know, no. Little avatar, do you know? Mm, I, I I don't know exactly. I think uh, internal potency is spiritual potency. External is material potency. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Good. Very good. Okay, did you know that, Melin? Did you make a note of this? Melin? Yes. Internal potency is spiritual potency. External potency is material. Okay. Okay, so we've seen this before. Okay, we're going now, lesson five, sadhana bhakti. So, three types of bhakti. Sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prema bhakti. Right? Oh. Principles of pure devotional service. Uttama bhakti. All right, you can see here the three types of devotional service. First of all, there's sadhana bhakti, devotional service in practice. Now, sadhana bhakti is of two kinds. One kind is called vaidhi bhakti, and the other is called Raganuga Bhakti. Vaidhi Bhakti means according to regulative principles. What are these regulative principles? Not just be a vegetarian, follow four principles, not like that. But there are regulative principles about devotional service. Things like wake up early in the morning, take a bath, go to see the deity, worship the deity, worship Tosi, and then chant Japa, and then worship Prabhupada, and then hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Those are regulated principles. There are many regulated principles, different rules to be followed in devotional service. But there's another kind of bhakti called Raganuga Bhakti, spontaneous devotional service. Right? Now, just like when we're new devotee, we don't like to wake up in the morning. We're supposed to wake up by four o'clock in the morning. So we don't like to wake up very much in the morning. And you need an alarm clock. And even then you may not get up. But Raganuga Bhakti is very spontaneous. We'll do it naturally. We won't, we'll, we won't wait for the alarm clock. We'll get up even before the alarm clock goes off. We'll wake up and we'll get up and we'll be chanting. We won't wait for four o'clock. We'll get up by three o'clock or 3.30 and we'll chant like that. So that's spontaneous devotional service, more advanced. So, are you spontaneous or are you regulative principles? Naraini, is your devotional service spontaneous or is it according to regulative principles? 
Narayani Maharaj is she there? Shobha Mai is Narayani there? No, ma no Maharaj, she's not here as of now. <laughs> is the other, who's the other Mataji who's there? Sandhya Mataji. San Sandhya, is she there? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, yes, Maharaj. So Sancha Maharaji, is your devotional service Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti? Uh, Vaidhi Bhakti Maharaj. Okay. Yes. We should follow the regulative principles. If we follow the regulative principles, then naturally we'll come gradually to Raganuga Bhakti. How long have you been a devotee, Sanjay Mataji? Um, since childhood, perhaps. Really? Um, Your parents yes. are devotees? Sorry, your, Maharaj? Your mother and father are also devotees, huh? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, wonderful. So, maybe you're more spontaneous, so. Maybe you're already Raganuga Bhakti. Trouble waking up in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially in the winter, maybe. Where are you? Where are you living? In Holland. Oh, in Holland. Oh, okay. Good. So, yeah, it's difficult sometimes to wake up in the morning in the winter time, and Holland can be cold there. Yes. All right, so two kinds of sadhana bhakti, vaidhi bhakti and raganuga bhakti. And then the bhava bhakti means devotional service in ecstasy. It's, it's advanced. You have to be advanced to come to that level of bhava bhakti. Not very common. And then prema bhakti. Devotional service and love of God. Now that is the goal, to come to prema bhakti. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prem punarto mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God. Prema bhakti. So three kinds of devotion. And if you're doing sadhana bhakti, can you be a pure devotee? Shobhamai Mataji? Yes, Maharaj, I think so. Yes, yeah. You may be doing sadhana bhakti, you can be a pure devotee. You don't have to be a prema bhakti. A prema bhakti, of course, is more advanced, but still you can be a pure devotee doing sadhana bhakti. Doing bhava bhakti or prema bhakti, they're all, it's all pure devotion. This book, Nectar of Devotion, is all about pure devotion, right? We're not teaching anything about impure or mixed devotion. We're only hearing about pure devotion. Okay, so the book des describes different kinds of devotional service. Bhagavad Bhakti Veda, varieties of devotional service. And laharis mean waves. So this is the Purva Vibhag. We're only studying Purva Vibhag, means the east section of the ocean of nectar of devotion. It's the first section. So we're studying that and we'll, we'll, we will hear about sam, Samanya Bhakti. That's the first two, first two introduction in the first chapter, a general description. And then Satana Bhakti, chapter 2 to chapter 16. So that's the, the big part of the, the course. We're going to hear about Satana Bhakti and how to practice it. And then we'll hear a little bit about ecstasy, about Bhava Bhakti, and a tiny bit about Prima Bhakti. Bhava Bhakti is in chapter 17 and 18. Prema Bhakti is in chapter 19 of the book. 
Right? Do you all have a, a hard or a soft copy of the book? I hope so. You can get it from the internet if you don't have it. Okay, so that's the book. All right. Who's going to? Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, you can read today. Okay. The first eligibility for Krishna consciousness. The person eligible for Krishna consciousness or devotional service can be classified by his particular taste. He says that devotional service is a continual process from one's previous life. No one can take to devotional service unless he had, has had some previous connection with it. For example, suppose in this life I practice devotional service to some extent. Uh, even though it is not 100% perfectly performed, whatever I have done will not be lost. In my next life, from the very point where I stop in this life, I shall begin again. In this way, there is always continuity. But even if there is no continuity, if only by chance a person takes interest in a pure devotee's instruction, he can be accepted and can advance in devotional service. The Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, Second Paragraph. All right. Okay, so we're hearing about devotional service is continuous from one's previous life. Just like Somya Maharaji, her parents, she, t she said, her parents are devotees. So, she must have been a devotee in her last life. She must have been doing devotional service or somehow she had some connection to devotional service in her last life. And now she has taken birth in a family of devotees. Right? It's continuous. You do some service in the previous life, and then you go on, you get that benefit in the next life. So you practice a little in the previous life, you get an opportunity to do more in this life. But Prabhupada said, even if we didn't, if in our last life if we didn't do anything, still if we take an interest in the devotee's instruction, then we can be accepted and we can get an opportunity to advance in Krishna consciousness. So this is the, the idea that even we didn't have any connection, doesn't matter. If we, if we're here, if we hear from the devotees and if we take it seriously, then we can be given the chance to be a devotee. So who is eligible for Krishna Consciousness? You see, we're speaking about who is eligible, who is qualified to get to be a devotee. So, maybe, maybe in a previous life, maybe we were devotees. But maybe not. We don't know. Maybe we were, we were devotees in our previous life. But somehow, we have an opportunity in this life, so we can be accepted, if we follow. Go ahead Prabhu, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu. If someone has a taste for hearing discussions of Krishna from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, he is eligible to engage in devotional service. But someone who has a taste for mental speculation and argument, he cannot enter into devotional service. Here, taste means Shraddha. Shraddha means faith. A combination of faith and attraction. Giraj Swami, VHE, Nectar of Devotion class. Yes. So, another way in which we can become a devotee, we can be qualified to become a devotee, if we are interested to hear Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. If we take an interest, then that will help us to become devotee. But if somebody just wants to argue and speculate, he cannot become a devotee. If somebody is just only arguing, if they say, well, I think, I, uh, you know, then that, that's going to, then they'll have very, it will be very difficult to make them devotee. So they have to be willing to hear and they can ask questions. 
So two things, faith and attraction. Go ahead, Prabhu. This reasoning may appear to be circular. One requires attraction to begin devotional service, but one requires devotional service to achieve an attraction. <laughs> yes, we require attraction. If we are attracted, we can begin devo How do we become attracted? Well, if we, if we do devotional service, then we become attracted. So how do, we be, how do we get attraction? We have to do devotional service. So which one comes first, attraction or devotional service? How then does devotional service begin? Devotional service begins with the causeless mercy of a devotee. By this mercy one may unknowingly execute devotional service, agnyata sukriti, and thus develops a slight taste or attraction to bhakti. Waves of devotion, page 52. Okay. Can you think of any examples? Somebody got causeless mercy of a devotee? Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu? Right now I can't really think of anything. My head's blank. Did you never get any mercy from a devotee? Sure, I did, but I just can't think of it right now. From where? I think Devotee from Bhatma also. Devotee from Devotee yes, from. Really, Prabhu? Yes, I was born in my birth. <laughs> okay, born in a holy dam. Wow, that's a special birth. Yeah, born in the holy dam. So, costless mercy of a devotee. Did, did you get any costless mercy of a devotee, Sashikan? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, I was uh, attracted to Prasadam, Sri Prasadam. Devotees, they extended the, themselves and they, they brought me to the program and there I appreciated the Prasadam. I, be my, I began the process through by appreciating the Prasadam. Associated with prasadam? Yes, Father. Oh, you're a great devotee of prasadam. Yes, <laughs> Okay, very nice. They gave you a lot of prasadam to make you a devotee. Okay, anybody else? Uh, maybe? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu? Sudarshan yeah. Prabhu? Yes, yes. I got attracted to this devotional life through uh, one of my, uh, one devotee, his name is uh, Avadud Das. He was, uh, he was in uh, Juhu most probably, yeah, in, in 80s he was in Juhu. So somehow I got in touch with him and he used to tell me the various stories about Krishna, various things about Krishna and then he is one who had taken me to Vrindavan where he, uh, he, pro he gave me a seva. And I was doing the seva of uh, Balram Mandir in, at Madhuvan and that gave me that sort of attraction or something. And after that, I left everything <laughs> and I'm fully into now seva and all. Okay, very good. What, what mercy did you get from Balaram? Um, uh, yeah, that um, at Balaram Mandir, it's just, it's in Madhuvan where I had to clean that temple. I was to, had to clean the temple, okay, that day. That, that was the mercy you got? You got to clean the temple? Yes, yes, yes. And you felt ecstasy from that, did you? Exactly, exactly. Absolutely. Absolute ecstasy. You felt so pleased, so happy to clean the temple? Yeah. How did that work? Why were you so happy to clean the temple? It was a it, it was a sort of blissful moment for me because I had never been to exposed to such a thing like service to God. But prior to that, I used to hear a lot of things. I was busy in my sort of means I was into into a business of international tourism. I used to go to various countries and was in tourism, but never was that much in uh, connected with God means with Lord. 
so that was the first time uh, when avadut sir uh, avadut prabhu took me and he told me okay this is your service you have to do this and then that actually changed my life 360 degree wow okay anybody else like to share anything how they became a devotee recently remembered something that uh, Seva I had had because of a devotee. She uh, had a group of us and then we had to arrange the Maha clothes of Panchatattva and Radha Madhav in the temple. We had to arrange all the clothes that are not getting used anymore. And so we had to like put them in the bags and all. So that, that felt really nice because it was... Uh, it's blissful knowing that it was all Maha clothes that were worn by the deities. And what and, happened to all the clothes? Um, the, the, the clothes, those are like old clothes, so a lot of them were just put in bags. And I think they, the temple plans to auction them, I'm not sure. But that's, I think, what was the plan with it. Okay. Okay, well, go ahead. Go ahead, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, keep reading. Attraction or taste is the qualification for making a commitment to the systematic cultivation of sadhana bhakti. However, there is no qualification required for receiving causeless mercy and beginning agyana, agnyata sukriti. Mm. So to do sadhana bhakti, there's a qualification. There has to be attraction or taste. You have to have some attraction. It's not so. You, it's not you just do it. To do sadhana bhakti, you have to have a taste or the attraction for it. But if you don't have that attraction, then you can do agyata sukriti. <laughs> There's no qualification. Agyata sukriti is causeless, causeless mercy. Do you know what causeless mercy means? Causeless mercy. Devotee asked Prabhupada, he said, what is causeless mercy? Prabhupada said, just like somebody comes and brings you a hundred thousand dollars and say, here, take it. That is causeless mercy. You never saw the devotee, you never saw the person before, but somebody come and they just want to give you a hundred thousand dollars. Did it happen to you, Sudarshan? Yes, Maharaj. I think that happened to me because uh, the uh, devotee who had sh shown me the way to Krishna consciousness, this is something which I, I, I didn't know him a uh, few months back from then. Okay, all of a sudden we met and suddenly he gave to me and there is one more by one more person from Delhi. We both got that causeless mercy from that devotee. Oh, so, yeah. okay. You got mercy from a devotee. But did ever did any did anybody ever come and give you a hundred thousand dollars? No. No. But the devotee came and gave you mercy. Yes, exactly. Okay, good. So, here you can see. Look at the picture carefully. You see? In the middle, in the center circle, that is devotional service. Right? This is the devotional service. And here is the costless mercy coming in. You see? One is attraction for devotional service and execution of devotional service. So somebody's attraction is doing it. You're doing the devotional service and someone else, they, they get, they've got an attraction for it. 
so they're attractive for it, they do it, somebody else does it. Okay, Bibu Chaitanya Prabhu. Yadrachaya Matkatadao Jata Shedas Shadas Tu Yaha Puman Nanirvino Nati Sakta Bhakti Yoga Shia Siddhi Daha. If someone, some, if somehow or other by good fortune one develops faith in hearing and chanting my glories, such a person, being neither very disgusted with nor attached to material life, should achieve perfection through the path of loving devotion to me. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.20.8, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.15, Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 3, Second Paragraph. Thank you, Prabhu. So this is a verse from the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. Somehow or other, by good fortune, in other words, you could say causeless mercy. <laughs> what? We develop faith in hearing and chanting. We don't know why you develop faith, but somebody is attracted to hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna. Then such a person, the person should be neither very disgusted with nor attached to material life. Now, this, both things are required. He shouldn't, he shouldn't hate material life and he shouldn't be very attached to material life. Right? If he hates, if he hates material life, that's not good. And if he's too attached to material life, that's also not good. He has to be in between. He has to be cautious about material life. He's not too much attached and he's not too much detached. So that person, he can become perfect through devotion to me. If, we're too, if we hate material life very bad, it's not good. And if we like material life also, it's not good. So this is the qualification for becoming a Krishna conscious, to do devotional service. Yad chaya mab katadao jata shadas tu yaha puman. If somehow or other, by good fortune, one develops faith in hearing and chanting my glories. Yes. 11.20.8, Bhakir Samrita Sindhu, 1.2.15, Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 3, Second Paragraph. Somehow or other, good fortune. We get faith in hearing and chanting. Once some disciples said to Srila Prabhupada, Brahmananda Brahmite Kona Bhagyavan Jiva Guru Krishna Prasade Paya Bhakti Lata Vija. Only someone who is very fortunate gets the seed of Bhakti by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. So the disciples said to Srila Prabhupada, We're not fortunate. Actually, we're very unfortunate. So how could we get Bhakti? Srila Prabhupada said, I have created your good fortune. Dear Swami, we are Nectar of Devotion class. All right. So this is the famous verse. This is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Brahmanda Brahmite Konya Bhagyavanjeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhukti Lata Beej. So disciple said to Prabhupada, you see this verse, this verse is saying that somebody who is very fortunate gets a seed of bhakti. The seed of bhakti is there, the bhakti lata beach. This is the seed of bhakti. And who gets it? That the, the one who is a kunya bhagyavan, kunya bhagyavan jeev, means a fortunate living entity, one who is very lucky. He gets Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Latabi. He gets the mercy of Guru and Krishna. By the mercy of Guru and Krishna, he gets Bhakti Lata Bij, the seed of devotion. So the disciple said to Prabhupada, We are not fortunate. Actually, 
We are very unfortunate. How could we get bhakti? So Prabhupada said, I have created your good fortune. Prabhupada said, I am giving you the bhakti. So I am making you fortunate. So who is fortunate? Anyone who is getting bhakti, getting the chance to do devotion, they are fortunate. Okay, so categories of pious activities. There are different kinds of pious activities. Do you remember when you studied the Bhagavad Gita, right? You all studied the Bhagavad Gita and you studied about charity. Charity is, now giving charity is pious, right? Isn't it? If you do, if you do charity, it's pious. But there's different kinds of charity. Some charity is in the mode of ignorance. Is that pious? If you give money to someone and they take the money and go and buy drugs, is that pious? No. Uh, if you give charities to someone, then they go and take the money and they go and. Use it to get cigarettes. Is that pious? No. What about if you give charity to someone and you want to get a, a nice name? You want to get your name. You want to be known famous. Oh, I give this charity. Everybody will see your name. Is that good? Oh, no. That is passion, Maharaj. That is passion. Yeah, that's passion, right. And somebody else, they want to give charity, they say, I want to get rid of my sinful reactions because I did a lot of sins, so I'm giving charity. Is that pious? Is that in the mode of goodness? Actually, that mentality is not good, Maharaj. Because he is, something, he is asking something in return. So, Who? Expectation. Passion. Who is asking something in return? The person. Huh? The person who is giving charity, mm -hmm. he wants, uh, he wants to get rid of the sinful reactions, protective actions. Yeah. So that's charity in the modes. The mode of passion, or or the mode of goodness. Okay, so categories of pious activities. Bhajan Mukhi Sukriti. Bhajan Mukhi Sukriti. Bestow material opulence. Bhajan Mukhi Sukriti. Sukriti meaning up. And then Moksha Mukhi Sukriti. That's different. Different kinds of pious. One, one is you get material opulence, then mokshon mukhi sukriti, enable the living entity to merge into the existence of the Supreme. Is that a nice thing? Merging into the existence of the Supreme. Who wants to merge? Sitala, do you want to merge into the Supreme? Sitala Madhaji? Oh, sorry, I'm mean, uh, No. You don't want to merge in, oh, into no. the Supreme? I don't know what is Madhaji. Merge, it means, uh, it means you go into it, you, you become one, you enter into it, and you become one, you lose your individuality, enter into the oneness of the Supreme. Merge, you merge, you know merge just like the, the merge, we, we put everything together, everything goes together, just like you make kitchari. You know when you make kitchari, you merge the rice and the dal and the sabji and it all goes together. So Are I you, mix, huh? like kitchari like with Krishna. 
I don't know what. Inku he yi. 就是和与主合一。Yeah, yeah, 合一，合一 ，Yeah, like 合一。And no, I want to become Krishna's servants. Yes, right. You don't want to merge. You don't want to become one. We don't want to merge into the existence of Krishna. We want to be Krishna's servant, eternal, eternally, always, right? So another kind of pious activity, bhakti unmukhi sukriti, awaken one's dormant Krishna consciousness. So that's the highest kind of sukriti. Sukriti means pious activity, right? Sukriti means to do pious activity. But there's different kinds of pious activity. Some may be good. Some may be good in the material world, just like this bhajan mukhi sukriti, that gives material benefit, material benefit. Mokshan mukhi sukriti, this is impersonal, this is the mayavadi, they want that. And bhakti un mukhi sukriti, this is what the devotee wants, right? So Sitala wants to be a devotee, she doesn't want to become one. With Krishna, she wants to be Krishna's servant. So she will do bhakti unmukhi sukriti. Right? The good fortune of bhakti unmukhi is attainable only when one comes in contact with a devotee. So where do you get bhakti unmukhi from? Vibhu Chaitanya, if I want to get Bhakti Unmukhi Sukriti, how do I get it? Association of the devotees? Yes, right. We have to contact with a devotee. And if you contact the Mayavadi and you do some pious activity for a Mayavadi, for an impersonalist, then what will happen? You merge it with the Brahman? Yeah, he may bless you to, to become one. <laughs> he, may, he may bless you that you become a, an, an impersonalist and you merge into the oneness. And if you do some pious activity in the material world, on the material platform, then what happens? You go to the heavenly planets. Yeah, you would, yeah, you'll get material opulence, right? Just like if you give, you give charity, for the hospital or for the school, like that, you give some charity for the poor people, then you will get, you get it back. Next life or this life, next life, you may get it back. Maybe you go to heaven or maybe you're born in a rich family, next life. Maybe you get a lot of money in the next life. But if you give charity to the impersonalist and to the jnani, then you'll get impersonal, you'll become an, a mayavadi. <laughs> but you give for a devotee, they'll bless you, the devotee will bless you, may you also become a devotee. May you always remember Krishna. Right? So that's the difference. Different? Maharaj, yes? I have one question out here. Like, how does a a person in general uh, come to know whether that person is a mayavadi or is a uh, 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 or a devotee. It's very difficult for a general person to identify. Well, the mayavadis, they won't put tilak on. No, that <laughs> that we understand, but generally a general person, it's very difficult for them. Like. Uh, if whoever approaches first, they go to that direction only. So, obviously in that case, I think Krishna Kripa is what is required. Well, no, I was saying devotee Kripa. You want Kripa, Krishna Kripa, that comes through the devotee. Okay. You get Krishna's mercy. By the mercy of Krishna, you get the mercy of a devotee. Then by the mercy of a devotee, you get the mercy of Krishna. Okay. 
It's not so easy to meet Krishna and to get his mercy. But by the mercy of Krishna, you get the mercy of a devotee. That is Krishna's mercy. It comes through the devotee. And then the devotee, he, give, he brings us to Krishna to get Krishna's mercy. Na nirvino nati sakto bhakti yoga sya siddhi daha. Such a person, being neither very disgusted with nor attached to the to material life, should achieve perfection through the path of loving devotion to me. Right. Shrimad Bhagavatam 11.20.8. So, if we're too much attached, if we're too much attached to the material life, what will happen? Yes, if we're too much attached to material life, where's that Bhakta, Bhakta Ilyas? Do you know? Ilyas is missing today. Is he? Oh, yeah. oh okay. So, uh, what about Bhakta Vatsal Nishringa? Yes? Um, he, will, he will not be able to do pure devotional service because he'll still have material attractions. And he'll want to do those things. Yeah, he's going to be engaged in material life, right? Material sense gratification. And what if he's too much, if he hates the material world, what will happen? I don't know. Hmm? I don't know, I was also wondering. Really? The question of who? That is the... Those who hate the material, right? That is the position of Ganesh. Ganesh, right. That's the position of Ganesh, right. They hate. So what do they do? They try to merge in the Brahman. Yeah. And how do they do that? How do they try to do that? By uh, destroying their existence. existence. Yeah. They, they try to go away from the world. They renounce everything. They go away from everything. And... They may go in the forest or in the cave or something. They're very disgusted. They hate material world. They want to be away from people. They just want to be alone and they go away from everything. And so their goal, they're thinking about liberation from material life. They, their goal is Sayuja Mukti. They want to merge. They want to merge. But a devotee doesn't want that. Okay. Yes, Prabhu, Prabhu Chaitanya. Those who become disgusted with material life take to impersonal philosophical speculation and rigorously try to stamp out any trace of personal existence. Those who are still attached to material sense gratification try to purify themselves by offering the fruits of their ordinary activities to the Supreme. A first-class candidate for pure devotional service, on the other hand, is neither completely disgusted with nor attached to material life. He does not desire to pursue ordinary. Material existence any further, because it cannot award real happiness. Nevertheless, a candidate for devotional service does not give up all hope for perfecting personal existence. A person who avoids the two extremes of material attachment and a personal reaction to material attachment and who somehow or other gets the association of pure devotees, faithfully hearing their message, is a good candidate for going back home, back to Godhead, as described here by the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.20.8 purport. Okay. So, we're hearing. Who is a good candidate to become a devotee? Who is eligible for Krishna consciousness? They shouldn't be too much disgusted with the material world. You know, sometimes somebody comes, oh, I hate the world, I don't, I just want to get away from people, I don't want to be in this world, I just want to be alone. They just want to go away. So they're not, not very, that's not very good. 
and somebody is very attached to sense gratification, oh, I really want to enjoy, I really want to make a lot of money, I really want to have my nice, I, I need to have my own home, I need to have a lot of money, I need my own car, and I want to have a, a beautiful wife, and I want to have many children, like that. This is all material sense gratification. So we shouldn't be too much attached to these things. We will accept whatever Krishna arranges. So we have to purify ourselves, offer the fruits of our activities to Krishna. So the first class person, the person who will make a good devotee, he's not disgusted with the material world and he's not too much attached to it. He doesn't desire material life, but he doesn't want to get to run away from it either. He knows the material world cannot give real happiness. So he doesn't give up hope for person for perfecting his personal existence. So we shouldn't be on one extreme very impersonal and we shouldn't be very materialistic on the other extreme. So we have to have association. We have to get the association of good devotees and we have to hear the teachings of Krishna consciousness and then we can go back home, back to Godhead. Alright, so sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti means There's a definition here. You don't need to know this definition, but we should know the meaning, what sadhana bhakti means. We should know what it means, right? You don't need to know all the Sanskrit. Oh, so much Sanskrit. Okay, here we have. Yes, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu. One transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained, is executed by the senses. It is called sadhana bhakti, or a regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the poten potentiality of devotional service in practice. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.2 So, Devotional service is described here, transcendental, by which love for Krishna is attained, is executed by the senses. So we use our senses to do this sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti is done by the senses. It's a regulative discharge. Devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The problem is that our heart is not clean, our heart is covered. So although every devotee has devotional service in their heart, the heart is covered and we have to, uh, we have to clean the heart to awaken that love for Krishna, to awaken the mood of doing service. So the awakening of this devotion is devotional service in practice, sadhana bhakti, all right, sadhana bhakti. Yes, Prabhu? So, practice means employing both the mind and the senses in the practical devotional service. This practice is not for developing something artificial. For example, a child learns or practices to walk. This walking is not unnatural. The walking capacity is there originally in the child, and simply by a little practice he walks very nicely. Similarly, devotional service to the Supreme Lord is a natural instinct of every living entity. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 5th Paragraph. So devotional service in practice. Prabhupada's giving example. Just like a child, 
when your child starts to walk, right? When the child is very young, cannot walk, but you hold the hand and you help him train the child to walk, gradually the child learns to walk. So the ability to walk is there in the child, just simply needs practice and then he walks very nicely. So this is the instinct of every living and the same way, just like walking is there, devotional service to Krishna is there in everyone. Everyone is a devotee. They have, it has to be, they have to practice and gradually awaken. There are certain prescribed methods for employing our senses and mind in such a way that our dormant consciousness or love in Krishna will be invoked. As much as the child, with a little practice, can begin to walk, one who has no basic walking capacity cannot walk by practice. Similarly, Krishna consciousness cannot be aroused simply by practice. Actually, there is no such practice. When we wish to develop our innate capacity for devotional service, there are certain processes which by our accepting and executing them will cause that dormant capacity to be involved. Such practice is called Sadhana Bhakti, the Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 6th Paragraph. Okay. So Prabhupada is explaining, there are certain things which you do which will help us to awaken a Krishna Consciousness. Certain things which we have to do, like chanting and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, studying Prabhupada's books, studying the, the scriptures, and chanting Hare Krishna and eating prasadam, seeing the deities, all these things, they will help us to awaken devotional service, to awaken our bhakti, to awaken our love for Krishna. Nitya Sridha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabhu Naya Shavanadi Sudha Chite Karaya Udaya Pure love for Krishna is eternally established in the hearts of the living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, this love naturally awakens. Sri Chaitanya Charat Charitamrit Madhya Lila 22.107 So this is Lord Chaitanya's teaching. Lord Chaitanya, in this case, he was talking to Sanatana Goswami and he, he spoke this verse. This is a, a famous verse, well known. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. Nitya Siddha means Krishna Prema is Nitya Siddha. It's eternally. Nitya means eternal. Perfect. It's eternally in the heart. Sadhya Kabu Nai. It's always in the heart of every living entity, and it, it's a perfection. But shravanadi shuddha chite kori yudai, it has to be awakened by hearing. When we purify ourselves by hearing and chanting, then love for Krishna will awaken. But the love is there in the heart. We just have to practice. Oh. The transcendental vibration established by the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the sublime method of reviving our Krishna consciousness. As living spiritual souls, we are all originally Krishna conscious entities, but due to our association with the matter from time immemorial, our consciousness is now polluted by the material atmosphere. The material atmosphere in which we are now living in is called Maya or illusion. Maya means that which is not. And what is this illusion? The illusion is that we are all trying to be lords of material nature. While actually we are under the grip of our stringent laws. When a servant artificially tries to imitate the all-powerful master, this is called illusion. We are all trying to exploit the resources of material nature. But actually we are becoming more and more entangled in our complexities. Therefore, although we are engaged in a hard struggle to conquer nature, we are ever more dependent on her. This illusory struggle against material nature can be stopped at once by revival of our Krishna consciousness. Mm. 
This is uh, Prabhupada's lecture about the chanting of Hare Krishna. Maybe you've all heard that. Prabhupada speaks about this. On, I think there was a recording made and it was called The Happening Album. And Prabhupada spoke on it and this is how he spoke. He introduced the chanting of Hare Krishna. And this record, this was the record, this is what that, that person, that musician, George Harrison, he heard, the, he heard the recording of chanting Hare Krishna and he liked it very much. So he got the recording, he liked it very much. And then later on he met the devotees. But Prabhupada had made the recording in New York in 1966 because a devotee, there was a man there in New York, he told Prabhupada, he said, you know Swamiji, he said, everybody today, they all like, they're all listening to music. They like recordings of music. And he said, if you just make a, he said, you should make a recording of your chanting. So Prabhupada did a recording of the chanting and he also spoke and this is what he spoke. He introduced the chanting of Hare Krishna. Then he told them about devotional service, how we can awaken devotional service by hearing. So this is a famous lecture. Oh, <laughs> here's some more. Krishna consciousness is not an artificial imposition on the mind. His consciousness is the original energy of the living entity. When we hear the transcendental vibration, his consciousness is revived, and this process is recommended to the by authorities. By practical experience also, one can perceive that by chanting this Maha Mantra, or the great chanting for deliverance, one can at once feel a uh, transcendental ecstasy coming through from the spiritual stratum. These three words, namely Hare, Krishna, and Rama, are the transcendental seeds of the Maha Mantra. The chanting is a special call for the Lord and His internal energy, Hara, to give protection to the conditioned soul. This chanting is exactly like the genuine cry of a child for its mother. Mother Hara helps the devotee achieve the grace of the Supreme Father, Hari, or Krishna. And the Lord reveals Himself to the devotee who chants this mantra sincerely. No other means of spiritual realization, therefore, is as effective in this age as chanting the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. LP Krishna Consciousness, Hare Krishna Mantra Address. Yes, LP means long player, <laughs> right? Long playing Krishna Consciousness. So this was Prabhupada's lecture recorded there. Very beautiful description. It said, chanting is like the genuine cry of a child for its mother. So the mother is Hara, and she helps the devotee achieve the grace of the Supreme Father Hari, or Krishna. And the Lord reveals himself to the devotee who chants this mantra sincerely. So we have to avoid the offences in chanting. These practices will help one become cured of madness. As a man's mental disease is cured by the directions of a psychiatrist, so this sadhana bhakti cures the conditioned soul of his madness under the spell of maya, material illusion. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 7th Paragraph. Mm. So we're all mad, material world. Prabhupada told the story, he said there was one case, one man came to court and, the, and he was asked, uh, guilty or not guilty, and the man said, well, I, he said, I don't know, I'm mad, I don't know anything. So there was a doctor there, and the judge asked the doctor, he said, you take this man and examine him, and tell me, is he mad or not? Because some people, when they come to court, they'll say, well, I'm mad, I don't know anything, and that way they get off light, they don't get punished. So the, the judge told the doctor, the psychiatrist, he told the psychiatrist, you have to examine him and find out if he's mad or not. So the doctor, who was a psychiatrist, he took the man away in a room and he talked to him. 
And then after some time he came back and the psychiatrist said to the judge, the judge asked him, he said, well, is he mad or not? And the psychiatrist said, well, he said, as far as I know, he said, I've never met anybody who's not mad. He said, this material world, he said, everyone is mad. I never found anybody who wasn't mad. <laughs> so, Prabhupada told this story to all of us. He said, everybody, material world, were all mad people. We're living here in this material world. And we're suffering, but we're thinking, we're enjoying, we're thinking, oh, I'm happy, it's not so bad. So this is our disease. So the man's disease is cured by the psychiatrist. So our disease, what is our disease? What is our madness? Attractions to material world. Yes, we are materialistic. We are, we are, we are diseased by materialism or material illusion. The spell of Maya, material illusion. Mei Lin, can you understand this? Material illusion, the spell of Maya. Yes, yes, I got it. Can you give me an example about material illusion? Uh, material illusion is the man maybe wants to more, have more desire of material world. He wants to get more money and uh, uh, work hard. Why? Why does he want more money? Because he has the desire. He wants to enjoy. Want to enjoy because and, and, and what what does he want to enjoy? What what does he want to enjoy? What things? Because he uh his uh his uh his uh his, uh, his, uh, his, his consciousness is covered by material material world there. Yes, his consciousness is covered by material desires. So what does he want to do? He wants money. So, What's he going to do when he gets money? What's he going to do when he gets the money? To enjoy. To How? Enjoy. What's he going to do to enjoy? Uh, I don't know how to enjoy. <laughs> you don't know how to enjoy? When you get money, what do you do? Uh, how to buy some more clothes and uh, more clothes? Yes, uh, more clothes, yes, more uh, clothes. Like this? Yes, <laughs> right, more clothes. That's we're thinking, enjoy, right? More clothes. Mm -hmm. You already have many clothes, you want more clothes? Yes, right. But, uh, uh, yeah. Almost With, my clothes is not to, not to add much. <laughs> you want new clothes, more clothes, you want more, more money to buy more clothes, and we want more money to do what? To eat more, somebody wants to eat more, and somebody, mm -hmm. somebody wants to go to shopping, go to Calcutta, go to restaurant and go to cinema and watch movies and go to bar and maybe drink and uh, then yes <laughs> want to and this is the maya right yes so this is the maya, Hi, Hi, maya. Ah. i have a question like um, i have uh, some bhakti viksha member uh, when they join Krishna consciousness, they say, I would like to make more money for Krishna. Then after a long time, they're not joining our group. They're going to be Maya. So, I don't know. So, we should explain to them. We should use it what Krishna gives to us for service. It's not like you want to make more money for Krishna. 
Yes, right. Yes, we should be happy with what Krishna gives us, right? Yes. Just because we have more money does not mean we'll do more bhakti. Yeah. Malin, when Malin gets more money, she goes to buy more clothes. Her, her clothes are all buy from her husband. <laughs> When she gets money, she gives donation to temple. I know this. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah. Gives to the temple. If she gets money, she gives to the temple. That's very good. All right. So sadhana bhakti cures the conditioned soul of the madness of material life. When you do sadhana bhakti, then you forget about trying to enjoy material life. All right. Yes. Jiva Chaitanya Prabhu. Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu. Can you read this one? Nunam pramataha krute vikarma yad indriya pitaya apnoti nas sadhu manyayata atmanoyam asanapi klesher kleshada asabdehaha. Yes. Good. When a person considers sense gratification the aim of life, he certainly becomes mad after materialistic living and engages in all kinds of sinful activity. He does not know that due to his past misdeeds, he has already received a body which, although temporary, is the cause of his misery. Actually, the living entity should not have taken on a material body, but he has been awarded the material body for sense gratification. Therefore, I think it not benefiting an intelligent man to involve himself again in the activities of sense gratification by which he perpetually gets material bodies one after another. Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.4 Yes, an important verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? Nunam Pramata. Pramata means madness. Mad mad because they're because people are mad we said everyone's mad why why are they mad you remember shobha maya keshavi mataji why is everybody mad uh, because everyone is going after material pleasures and they are under the illusion or, or they are under maya yes so they do a lot of what kind of activities? They do a lot of sinful activities. All right. So what's the word vikarma? Vikarma is sinful activities. Right. Because people are mad, they do sinful activities. And why they why they do these sinful activities? Because they cannot control their senses. Yet indriya pritaya aprinoti. They have no control over their mind and senses. They do sinful activities. Nasadu manye yata atmanuya. Prabhupada says, that is not good. That is not good, my friend. Why? Because asana pikleshada asha deha. That you will get so much trouble. You will have to take another birth. You will have to take another body in the material world. So like that, we explain this verse. That because of our uncontrolled senses, we do sinful activities. And the result of these sinful activities cause us to take birth again in the material world. One of our devotees had a birthday the other day, so she, 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 she said, please bless me that I don't take birth again in the material world. <laughs> she said, bless me, I don't want to come back in the material world. But if you do all these sinful activities, if we're engaged in all the sinful activities and sense gratification, then we have to come back. We have to take birth again. So that's a problem. 
Go ahead, Vibhu Chaitanya. Uh, essence of Sadhana Bhakti. Narada Muni to King Yudhishthir. My dear King, one has to fix his mind on Krishna by any means. Srimad Bhagavatam 7.1.32 That is called Krishna Consciousness. It is the duty of the Acharya, the spiritual master, to find the ways and means for his disciples to fix his mind on Krishna. That is the beginning of Sadhana Bhakti. The Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 8th Paragraph. So Narayani Mataji, Narayani Mataji, are you there? Oh, Narayan? No, no, she's not there. Who's the other Mataji? Sad Sadhana, is it? Sandhya. Sandhya San Mataji. Sancha. Sancha Mataji, how do you fix your mind on Krishna? Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, by doing Japa. By doing japa, you, yes, that's good. If you're chanting Hare Krishna, yeah, you must be thinking of Krishna. Good. Anything else you do to help you think of Krishna? Are you initiated yet? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, who are you initiated by? Uh, Radha Govinda Maharaj. Oh, Radha Govinda Maharaj. Oh, you can speak Hindi, can you? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, good. Are you a Suriname Hindu? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, very nice. Good. Okay, so you listen to... How, how do you fix your mind on Krishna? You chant Hare Krishna? Anything else you do? Reading and... Yeah, reading the books. Good. Are you in Rotterdam? Uh, the Hague, Maharaj. The Hague. Okay. You have a center there? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Oh, good. Do you go there and do seva? Yes. Yeah, now during Corona a little bit less, but... Yes. Okay. Okay. We have programs every Sunday and with festivals. Oh, good. How many people come? Um, between 30 and 50. Mm -hmm. Is the program all in Hindi? No, Maharaj, it's in Dutch. <laughs> it's in Dutch, is it? Do you get many Dutch devotees coming? Uh, yes, yes. Good. Okay. So sadhana bhakti, fix the, the duty of the acharya. What were some of the ways Prabhupada got us to fix our mind on Krishna? How did Prabhupada do this? What did he tell us to do things to help us think of Krishna? Narayani Madhiji. Oh, she's not there. Uh, maybe Sobhya Mat Sobhya Mai Keshavi Mataji knows. Hey Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. So some of the ways are like uh, what uh, Mataji said, hearing, chanting, hearing, reading. And Prabhupada uh, very nicely helped us with the morning program. So we have... Uh, Mangalarti, so waking up early in the morning and Mangalarti and uh, listening to Bhagavatam and uh, um, yeah, preaching maybe, a bit of preaching, sharing the knowledge with others, thereby when we share, we read, we listen. Yes. So, okay. These are the ways, Maharaj. Following Ekadashi, offering. Do you do, of course, Singapore, you cannot do book distribution and Harinam Sankirtan in the street. Yes, you can't do public programs so easily. You can't go outside in the streets. Some restrictions there. The COVID times, book distribution and uh, uh, is not happening very regularly, not very in a very... Um, big manner, but yes, to some extent it happens. 
and earlier there used to be rath yatras but now that is also last two years we don't have any rath yatras also so mm. that was a nice way to engage people right yeah mm -hmm. okay so probably always thinking ways to fix a mind on krishna and of course we had Recently, they started the Damodar program, offering lamps for Damodar. That's for one month, of course. But that also helps people to fix their mind on Krishna. Every day, offering a lamp to Damodar and singing the Damodar Astakam song every day. It's very good for us. And Maharaj Prabhupada's the other best way was giving prasadam, bullets. Giving ISKCON bullets. Yes. <laughs> Gulab Jamin. He was a candidate to see Parikram. <laughs> what? To see Parikram. To see Parikrama. Yes. Jaipataka Swami is asking everyone to do four Tosi Parikramas every day for his benefit. Right? Yes. Yes. So everyone should do four extra Parikramas. For the benefit of His Holiness Jaipataka Maharaj to help him to get his health back and recover from his COVID. Okay, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu. So the fact is that we have got devotion for Krishna, that is fact, but some way or other we are separated and we have forgotten. So as soon as by this regulative principle, by the order of the spiritual master, by the injunction of the Shastras, we begin devotional service. That, that just like our students do here, this devotional service is the pushing process. Pushing process, and as soon as the energy comes, then automa automa automatically, clack, 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 no more pushing. Automatically, this pushing process is required. <laughs> the Nectar of Devotion, Lecture, Bombay, December 28, 1972. What's the meaning of clack, clack, clack? Well, Prabhupada is telling us about the car, motor car, you see. When Prabhupada was in America or somewhere in India, he knows about motor cars and he knows sometimes the car will break down and the battery may be flat and you, you can't get the car to run. So sometimes you have to push the car. You know, did you, maybe you don't know this, but sometimes we have to push the car. If you go a car, sometimes they won't start, it breaks down, and the car's not running very well, you have to get out and push it. And you push it, you push it, and then it starts going, as it starts ro rolling, and then the engine starts turning, and then they can start the car. And the clack, 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 the engine will start running. So Prabhupada is saying, as soon as the energy comes, then automatically, clack, clack, clack. And it's the sound of the motor car. So Prabhupada said, then no more pushing. But in the beginning, this pushing process is required. Right? So we, Prabhupada is describing that we have devotion for Krishna. It's in our heart. It's in everybody's heart. But we've forgotten and we have sep we're separated from Krishna. So, then Prabhupada said, by this regulative principle, by, meaning by the order of the spiritual master. And what is his order? By the injunction of the Shastras. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to stop this, you don't do that. So we begin devotional service. Things you have to do, things you don't do. So that, that, just like our students here. So Prabhupada is in, in Bombay, he's giving a lecture and he's talking about students. So the students, they were all young Western people. And, and Prabhupada said, just like our students here, the devotional service is the pushing process. As soon as the energy comes, then, then the car starts to run. And once the car is running, then you don't need to push anymore. So pushing is just the beginning. But once the car running, then 
no pushing is required. But in the beginning, to get the car started, a little pushing. Right? We have to push. We have to say, come on, you have to get up. We will say, come on, you should come to Mongol Arti. Come on, you should chant your rounds. You must do it. We push, right? That's pushing, pushing. Why are you not doing this? Why you didn't do that? <laughs> right? Pushing. Right? Do you like the pushing? Is anybody pushing you, Shobha Mai Keshavi? Yes, Haraj. <laughs> kind of, because still I have not got that, uh, uh, I would say I have still not got that energy. So I still need pushing for waking up, I need an alarm and for my other services, I need somebody to... Is your husband a devotee? Yes, Maharaj. He's also an initiated devotee? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, very good, you're lucky. Okay. So yes, not Maharaj, so we took it up together, so that way we are fortunate. But yes, we keep pushing each other. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Okay. So, in the in the beginning, we push, just like the motor car. Yeah. Sometimes you have to. You get the motor car is not very good. Doesn't start very well. So you have to push it. <laughs> So devotees also in the beginning, devotees in the beginning, they don't like to wake up sometimes and they don't like to chant and sometimes they don't like to read. So sometimes we push, push a little bit, come on, come on, you should do it, come on, go for Sankirtan, come on, go. <laughs> so pushing, you know, in the beginning like that. Okay, so two types of sadhana bhakti. First one is Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. This first part is called service according to regulative principles. One has to follow different regulative principles by the order of the spiritual master on the strength of scripture. The other one, Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. Another part of Sadhana Bhakti is called Raganuga. Raganuga refers to the point at which by following regulative principles one becomes a little more attached to Krishna and executes devotional service out of natural love. Right? Vaidhi sadhana bhakti, that's the pushing, you have to do it, you have to, you don't, we have to follow the rules. But Raganuga bhakti, spontaneous, you want to do it, you want to get up in the morning. You're, you're, you become attached to Krishna and we, we, we don't like to sleep, we want to get up. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 10th Paragraph. Okay, and here's two types of sadhana bhakti. Tasmad Bharata Sarvatma, Bhagavan Ishvaro Hari, Shrotavya Kirtitavyas Cha, Smartavyas Chetatatpayam. Right, this is... One, time, one kind of sadhana bhakti, meaning, my dear king, if you want to be fearless in meeting your death next week, for actually everyone is afraid at the point of death, then you must immediately begin the process of hearing and chanting and remembering God. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, First Chapter, Text number 5. So this is a nice verse. This is sadhana bhakti. We don't want to be afraid at the time of death, right? We shouldn't be afraid. But actually, it said everyone is afraid at the time of death. But if we are hearing and chanting, remembering God, then we won't be so much afraid. So here's the nice verse. Try to remember the nice verse. Tasmat Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavanishvaro Hari. Right? Srotavya Kirtitavyascha Smartavyas Chetata Bhayam. Become fearless. And here's the other kind of bhakti. Ragamarga Bhakti Loke Karite Prarachara. Para, paracharana. Lord appeared to propagate devotional service in the world on the platform of 
spontaneous attraction, spontaneous attraction, raga marga means spontaneous attraction, raga marga. We want to come to that level. Lord Chaitanya came to. Ah, I think you are rooted. Am I? Oh, no, no, no. It's unstable. It's unstable, Prabhu. I'm sorry. It's a, the, it's the internet connection. It's not good. It's on and off, sometimes stable. Anyway, ragamarg means spontaneous attraction. And this, we want to develop that kind of spontaneous attraction. Lord Chaitanya came to give this to the world. He wants people to come to this platform to, to develop this raga bhakti, raga marga bhakti. This is very nice, very wonderful bhakti means very advanced, They're very happy to chant and dance and to hear about Krishna and do it all the time. So Lord Chaitanya came in this world. He didn't just come to teach people to chant Hare Krishna. That is the Yuga avatar. But only one time in a day of Brahma, Lord Chaitanya comes personally to give this Raga Bhakti, Raga Marga Bhakti. And he gave it to the world. He wants everyone to come to this position. Because from Raga Marga Bhakti, then we can develop Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. Okay, practice of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. How to practice this Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti? When there is no attachment or no spontaneous loving service to the Lord, and one is engaged in the service of the Lord simply out of obedience to the order of the spiritual master or in pursuance of the scripture. Such obligatory service is called Vaidhi Bhakti, right? So, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, are you doing Vaidhi Bhakti or Raga Marga Bhakti? Vibhu Chaitanya? Uh, I was me, sorry. Are you doing I... Are you doing Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti? I am doing I think uh Raganuga Bhakti. Really? Oh wait, no, sorry. I'm doing Vaidhi Bhakti. Yeah, I think I think you'd be better to do Vaidhi Bhakti, right? <laughs> Vaidhi Bhakti means just like Shobhamai Keshavi Mataji said, she follows the order of the Guru. She's trying like that. So that is that is Vaidhi Bhakti. To follow the order of the spiritual master and the order of the scripture. We don't have any spontaneous attachment or attraction. We do it because we're told we have to do it, right? Prabhupada writes, when there is no attachment or no spontaneous loving service to the Lord, and one is engaged in the service of the Lord simply out of obedience to the order of the spiritual master or in pursuance of the scriptures, such obligatory service is called Vaidhi Bhakti. Bhakti Vatsalna Sringa Prabhu. Are you there? Yes, Maharaj. So are you doing Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti? Trying to do Vaidhi Bhakti. Okay. Good. Trying to follow the orders of your Guru and the scriptures. Yes. Very good. You can read for us Bhaktivedanta Sauna Shringa. Practice of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Essence of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Smartavya Satatam Vishnur Vishmartavya Na Chatujit Sarvavidhi Nishita Syut Etayur Eva Kinkara. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras should be the servants of these two principles. 
Feature Tiny Character Meta, Madhya Leela, 22.113, Nectar Devotion, Chapter 2, 17th Paragraph. So what are the two principles? We have to be the servant of these two principles. What two principles? Always remember Krishna, never forget him. Yes, very good. Always remember Krishna, never forget him. Go ahead. Within this simple order and prohibition, all regulative principles are found complete. If this injunction is followed, then all other rules and regulations will automatically fall into line. All other rules and regulations should be treated as assistance or serving to this one basic principle. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, 17th Paragraph. What's the one basic principle? What's the one basic principle? No? Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Madam. Yes, yes, Madam. Shobhamai Mataji, what is the one basic principle? Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. Yes, yeah. Right. Okay, so objectives. Let's see what we covered today. Divide, defined and explained the process of sadhana bhakti with reference to analogies. Defined the process of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti, what did we say it was? It's the practice of devotional service according to the rules and regulations of the scriptures. And we, we give the analogy, remember the analogy about the child walking, that everybody Everybody has the ability to serve Krishna and to love Krishna. They just have to practice. So just like a child has to learn to walk, he practices, right? So that was the analogy. And then the distinction between Vaidhi and Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, right? What's the distinction? Who remembers? May I? Yes. Yeah, Sudarshan? In, yeah, in Vaidhi Bhakti, we have to practice as per the orders of the Guru and Shastra. And in Raganuga Bhakti, it comes spontaneous. Yes, right. Spontaneous attraction to Krishna. And what did Lord Chaitanya come to give to everyone? Raga Marga Bhakti. Yes, right. Mood and mission. What's the qualification for beginning Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti? Not too attached or disgusted by material life? Yes, right. Shouldn't be too much attached, too much disgusted. And taste or faith? Yes, willing to hear. Okay. Okay, next lesson. We're going to go on on Monday. Chapters 3 to 5. The nectar of devotion and the waves of devotion. So please look over the chapters. Chapter 3 to chapter 5. 3, 4 and 5. You can prepare. Final quote from Srila Prabhupada. Thus the Krishna Consciousness Movement is so nice. Let everyone be engaged in whatever occupation he now has. Simply let him worship Lord Krishna by the result of his activities in Krishna Consciousness. That will adjust the whole situation and everyone will be happy and peaceful within this world. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, Last Paragraph. Okay. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Any questions? Anybody? Bhaktivasa Nishringa Prabhu, any question? Yes, Marsh. 
Um, I'm still a bit unclear about the point of uh, we shouldn't be too disgusted by material life. I thought that we should be aware of how miserable the material world is and that devotees are also sort of naturally disgusted by things like eating meat and drinking and things like that. So. Yeah. Yes, but the point is, if we're too much disgusted, it means we hate everybody, we hate everything, we don't trust anybody, we don't want anything from anyone, we, get, we just want to go away from the world. That's uh, the, what happens with people too much disgusted with the material world. Oh, I hate everybody, I hate everything, I just want to be alone. This is the, what happens. So you have to understand that in Bhakti Yoga, we need association. And if we don't have any association, then it's very difficult to advance. But if, if, we're, if, we're too, if, we're, if we have too much hate or disgust for the world, oh, I don't, I don't trust anybody, I don't like anything, and we just want to be away from everything, then this is not very good. This can create problems for someone. And somebody's too, some, sometimes people are too renounced. We get somebody, you know, they don't want to eat prasadam. They think, oh, eat food too much. No, no, this is my, this is good, not good. This is sense gratification. Eat sweets, eat cake, eat biscuits. Oh, this is all maya. I don't want to do any of this. And they don't want to eat prasadam. They think yeah, all prasadam is maya. They don't understand prasadam is Krishna's mercy. And so they have these things. Uh, they, they don't want to eat. They want to be very renounced, too, so much renounced, so artificial. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, if you eat too much or eat too little, it's not good. If you sleep too much or sleep too little, it's not good. You have to get sleep, you have to get it, and you have to eat, but don't eat too much, don't eat too little. And so the same way with uh, material life, you have to be moderate. You don't hate the world too much, and you don't like it too much either. Thank you so much. Yeah. But uh, it seems that uh, in conditioned state, uh, this tendency to uh, be attracted or being disgusted with material things is a very prominent manner. So how it can be adjusted? Well, we adjust it by Krishna consciousness, by seeing everything in relation to scriptures. Yes. You have to see the world in relation to Krishna. Just like sometimes you get a young man comes and maybe he had a bad experience with a girlfriend and he just wants to get away, I don't like any women, I don't want, you know, I don't, you know, all women, you know, I hate them all, you know, they're, <laughs> this woman cheated, you know, the woman was horrible to me, so I hate all women and so we go away from the world and don't want to talk to any woman like that, you know. But we have to see that they are also spirit souls, that they are also part and parcel of Krishna. So we have to see everything in relation to Krishna. That is the duty of devotee, develop Krishna conscious vision, to see all living entities equally. We see the elephant and the dog and the cow and the dog eater, and we see them all as spirit souls. Of course, we behave differently with different living entities, but we should understand that they're all spiritual beings. Just someone misused their karma, and somebody used their karma properly. The Prabhupada said the dog misused his karma, he's in the dog body. And the Brahmana, he got good karma, he's got good karma, so he's in the Brahmana body. Yes. Any other? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. 
Maharaj, um, this Raganuga Bhakti, uh, how, how, um, how different is it from Bhava Bhakti or Prema Bhakti? Because this in Raganuga Bhakti also, we are speaking about spontaneous love for the Lord. So, is it anyway close to Bhava or Prema? Sadhana Bhakti, close to Bhava or Prema? Raganuga Bhakti. Oh, Raganuga, Raganuga. Raganuga Bhakti. Yes, well, of course, Raganuga Bhakti, you know, to come to that stage of Raganuga Bhakti, yes, it's, uh, it's coming up there. You have to understand, yeah, one has to be quite advanced to come up to Raganuga Bhakti. But Raganuga Bhakti is particularly concerned with following the inhabitants of Vrindavan, right? So not everybody is, you know, may, may want to develop that mood of Vrindavan. And you could have Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti without going through Raga Bhakti. You can come without, you can come directly from Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti to go to Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. But other people, they will go through uh, Raga Bhakti. Ragamart Bhakti, as we heard Lord Chaitanya, he particularly wanted to promote this Ragamart Bhakti following the inhabitants of Vrindavan. So sometimes people are concerned in our Krishna consciousness movement, do we have also that opportunity to cultivate Ragamart Bhakti? Well, there's a lot of activities which we do which are there in Ragamart Bhakti. You know, we sing many bhajans like Jai Radha Madhava, you know, that's very much in relation to the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And we read the Krishna book, 10th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, we hear all about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. We do encourage devotees to chant japa, you know, but we encourage them also to preach. It's not just simply do your own sadhana. You see, sometimes there's a problem that people doing Raga Mark Bhakti, they don't want to preach. They just only care about their own self, their own sadhana. They're only, they want to be absorbed in Krishna and they don't want to meet the innocent people and to give the mercy. And so you have to combine the two, you see. There has to be... Uh, the mood to also give Krishna consciousness as well. It's not just cultivate Krishna consciousness ourself. So to come to that stage of Raganuga Bhakti, you have to be very serious in Krishna consciousness. And you have to really be very, uh, very fixed in your sadhana practice. You know, do a lot of reading and chanting and really take pleasure in reading and chanting. And like to discuss also the teachings of Rupa Goswami and so on. And then uh, Bhava and Prema Bhakti, uh, and well, Bhava Bhakti, this is the awakening of ec ecstasy that really it, it's going to come by the mercy of Krishna. You know, it's not something which will just. Uh, which you can really do on your own, just by your own efforts, but you have to get the mercy of Krishna. And if we come through that Ragamar Bhakti, then it will certainly be easier to come to that stage of Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti, very close. Yeah, you're, you're, you're certainly up there. So people on Ragamar Bhakti, they will be experiencing some Bhava. You'll read in chapter is it chapter 17 and 18, the description of one on Bhava Bhakti? And there are different qualifications. Maybe you've seen them. There are nine different qualifications, which somebody who's at Bhava Bhakti, they'll have. They don't waste any time. They don't, and they're very attracted to chanting, and they're very attracted to living in the holy place, and things like this. There are nine qualifications for Bhava Bhakti. So it's not that Bhava Bhakti has to be the tears and the rolling on the ground and, <laughs> you know, ecstasy. But the Bhava Bhakti is the, the dedication, the complete commitment to devotional service. 
So we can come to that stage. But but we go through first Vaidhi Bhakti, we do Vaidhi Bhakti for a number of years. How long have you been a devotee? Um, about eight to nine years, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a long time. Yeah. You were born in a Hindu family, of course. Um, yes, Maharaj. Yeah, so, so pretty much, you know, from your childhood you had that devotion to Krishna, maybe? Yes, Maharaj, but then without understanding the... I mean, we used to do a lot of things, but not with the right understanding. Yes, right. Mm. So, you know... Thank you, Maharaj. Yes? So, Maharaj, uh, should we try to figure out that uh, at what stage we are, how we are progressing, should we try to understand, or just we should execute our... Well, we're all at sadhana bhakti. Ah, bhakti bhakti, yes, Maharaj. And we're all doing vaidhi sadhana bhakti. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, the... This Raganuga, this Raganuga Bhakti, this is some more internal. Okay. Yeah, but you can cultivate, you can do more chanting, you can do more reading, right? Mm -hmm. you, if you're inclined that way, some, you know, but of course you should be already very well versed in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. You have to be very solid in that practice of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. And then there will be a a natural yearning to want to go into something deeper like Raganuga Bhakti. Under the guidance of your spiritual master. He can guide you on that. Right? Okay, so we will stop here today and we'll meet on Monday. Thank you very much. Okay. His Holiness Bhakti Vigla Vinasha Narasimha Maharaj ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vrinda ki.